Welcome to the T-Bird Zone, streamed every week on suutbirds.com and suunews.com. We're in studio this week with head football coach Ed Lamb, talking about a recap of the U the Texas San Antonio game last Saturday, where the Thunderbirds posted the 45-22 victory. Coach, again, great win. Back to back, just solid, great wins. Um, Thanks, Kyle. I really want to talk about uh, the special teams in this game. Um, Brady Meesum, particularly on uh, punt returns, uh, he had 62 yards. Um, and then also two catches. Oh, well, excuse me, he had a 62 yard kickoff re punt return. Um, not his only yards in the game, but uh, and then two catches for 60 yards. Uh, Casey Rawlinson, um, an Army reserve, making some huge tackles on the uh, kickoff coverage teams. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about uh, how special teams impacted the game on Saturday. That's a, that's a great point. We have um, the teams that I've been fortunate to be around as a player, coach, championship caliber teams. We've you know, been on some that have had great offenses and others that had great defenses, but um, the common denominator has been great special teams. There's something when a team knows that they can be pretty good, then everybody on the team wants to have a role, no matter what that role is. And, and some of our special teamers are our starters on offense and defense, and it's a role that everybody takes seriously. But there's also tremendous efforts by young guys who maybe aren't mentally ready to step into the starting lineup or just behind a better player, but there's a role for them in the special teams, and, and those guys just did a tremendous job. We had we had many good players in the coverage units. Uh, Mike Tagliaferri, you mentioned Casey Rollinson, had some real highlights. Ricky Clark, Anthony Fagans, uh, just tremendous job by the, the kickoff coverage unit especially, and then, um, and then the punt return unit did a great job, and Brady, of course, made the rest happen with some good blocks. You talked about how you used starters on uh – the kickoff coverage and things is there some danger involved with mm -hmm. that just because it is it's really kind of helter skelter on those kind of mm -hmm. plays where they're just going full out mm -hmm. it, is there any ever some size from the sidelines some biting nails from the sidelines of these are our starters who are flying mm -hmm. down the field and we've had we've had guys hurt it's a risk versus reward and and you know a, a, an illustration that's handy because we're sitting right here but two weeks ago Sacramento State didn't have a lot of starters on their kickoff unit, and we had a lot of starters on our kickoff return. They take the lead, and, and 10 seconds of game clock later, we had the lead with you know with our guys outperforming theirs with the kickoff return against their kickoff. So hopefully we get more rewards than risk. Our philosophy is we will. Um, talk about a little bit more about uh, Casey Rawlinson. One of the highlights you had uh, shown at the uh, coaches' luncheons um, every Monday, now at the president's house at noon, uh, I believe it's $10.00 for those interested to attend. Great lunch, delicious. It was great, yeah. uh, catered by the Garden House. Yeah. Um, you, you showed a highlight of Casey Rollins and flying down the field, takes on a blocker, barrels through the blocker, does a forward somersault, gets up and tackles the mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. Um, again, you had mentioned he's, he's an Army reservist. Mm -hmm. um, do you see a difference of how he approaches the game with that kind of background, um, having gone through this kind of Army reserve training? Maybe along the lines of what I just said, he's my. I have two brothers that served in the Marines, and and one of the things that I noticed when they when they came back and and were out of the Marines is that they really understood um, you know, chain of command and flow chart and and how important every single role is, no matter what it is. And uh, and Casey's one of those guys. I mean, every one of our players wants to be the starting linebacker, the starting fullback. In Casey's case, he's a linebacker and a fullback. And I, there's no question in my mind that he spends a lot of hours and time thinking about how he can become that the best he can be at those positions you know you don't uh, none of our guys really you know when they go to a family reunion and, and their uncle says hey what position do you play nobody says well i play right guard on on the punt team yeah. you know you always say i'm a linebacker or i'm a fullback or something like that but as i said on a championship team and with guys like casey that understand that every role is important they just give 100 percent of themselves every time and, and that's what you see when when you watch casey We've got four, five, six guys on that kickoff team that I get the chills when I watch them every time I see them. Well, and they're great highlights that you show yeah. each week again at the coaches' luncheon. And, uh, well, and then the scouting report videos that you show at the uh, Sunny Boys Barbecue Coaches Show on Wednesday night, um, 7 o'clock every it's Wednesday. 7 o'clock every Wednesday. That's a, more of a, a preview of the next opponent. Right. Um, let's talk a, a little bit about, uh, I don't want to say feather in your coach's cap, but... <sighs> I did. So okay. um, yeah, Larry did. Coker, head coach um, of Texas San Antonio, former head coach of the University of Miami when they won the national championship. 
Um, again, it was a solid win on Saturday over Larry Coker. How was that on a personal level for you as far as coaching goes? I mean, was that something that go home goes in the journal, hmm. beat Larry Coker today? Yeah. No, no, it's, it's really not. It, it's, it doesn't take very long working in this business. I mean, maybe my first couple of years as an assistant, you know, if my, if my position would play well, I felt like that I was a better coach than the guys we faced. But it's, it's such a humbling business. You know, very quickly you find out that it's about the players. And if your players are better, then, then you're going to win most of the time. And, and, and most of us as coaches just try to put our guys in a, in a fairly simple, sound system of offense, defense, and special teams and try to coach the fundamentals of the game. And, and you know, our coaches work incredibly hard. They're second to none in that way. I'm really proud of our staff. But in terms of are, are we any smarter than, than Coach Coker and his staff, I don't, I don't think that's a, the right way to look at it. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. um, talk a little bit about, uh, and my chain of thought here just, just dropped off. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll pull in at the next station. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, see, and it totally dropped. Um, as far as back-to-back -back, um, victories, again, handily, um, how have you seen just the way your, your players have approached the game? Um, so far, pretty good. No, the, the, um, honestly, the Tuesday is the first time today, this afternoon. It's the first time that we'll get the players back in force. Um, Sunday and Monday, they have a couple of um, it, it, optional workouts. I don't want to say optional in that they can they don't have to do it. It's optional in that they have three or four opportunities to get these workouts in and to get in and, and study some film and meet with their coaches. And so we haven't had the whole team together yet. And that's something that we look for every Tuesday is what kind of mindset the team is in. But we've got tremendous leadership, a lot of very good seniors. This is very important to the whole team, and I'm sure they'll be focused today and ready to prepare. Very good. Uh, you've been watching the T-Bird Zone, again, streamed every week on SUTBirds.com, NSUNews.com. Join us for the next episode when we're previewing the game with UNLV this Saturday. Thanks for watching.